and today we have Mike from Dr. Colossus. Mike, how are you doing? Good, man. How are you? I'm, I'm okay now. We Just to let everybody <laughs> know, we were supposed to start this about an hour or so ago, and um, I fucked about with my computer settings, and I, I Wait, killed... Wait, are, are, are we live? No, no, we're not live, but we are definitely oh, recording. God for that. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, we I stuffed up the uh, the settings, so Mike couldn't hear me, and it was a nightmare, but we're set now, so it's good. Um, yeah. So sorry about that earlier, mate. Um, That's fine. So the, the, I'm going to get you to introduce yourself and everything about it in a minute, but I just, this is the coolest thing I think I've ever read. The world's finest Simpson themed doom band. Dr. Colossus are a Melbourne based four member, four finger riff machine who sing a lot about that guy in Millhouse. <laughs> I don't think that's, a, a, you know, that's one of those sentences that you only ever see once written anywhere. Like, and thank, thank God for that. You, you know, you're never going to see it again. So, Mike, tell me, who are you? What do you play? What's Dr. Colossus? Okay. Um, so, yeah, I'm Mike, um, also known as uh, Dr. Love. Uh, play in a Simpsons-themed uh, Doom stoner metal band uh, from Melbourne, Australia. Um, so... Yeah, basically to break that down, it's heavy music where all the lyrics are basically about either an episode of The Simpsons or a character of The Simpsons. Um, normally the saddest and miserable and most desperate element of that character or that episode. Uh, yeah, that's it. And uh, I think we're the only one uh in australia so yeah we'll we'll wear that crown as being the finest yeah, yeah. and and look i i'll 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 be 100 percent honest i'll fanboy a little bit in this because um uh long story short uh i had a bad day in 2015 and oh. um and my mate pete from ocean lord um we weren't ocean lord at that point said right dude Get your shit. We're going out tonight. And he and he just Googled and he went, who's playing where? And he went, let's go to the Yayas. So we went to the Yayas and there were four bands playing. And I think it was the second band. And at that time, you weren't a member of, of um yeah. Dr. Colossus. Yeah. And these two guys get up and I sort of looked and went, what the f you know, what's this? And it was a drummer and a guitarist. And the yeah. first strum of the guitar we both put our beers down turned our heads and went holy shit Fuck. yeah we got out of the booth that we were sitting in because that's how interested we were in the second band of the night we ended up dead dead smack in front they finished the next band started and we went back to the booth we're having beers and we were just blown away so Pete and I have seen Dr. Colossus quite a few times. And um, was, that, was that downstairs at Yaya's? Yeah, before down they the front. started doing Yeah. Four four bands. I reckon one of the bands that I played in back then opened. It was either it was either Redro Rodriguez or it was either the Dukes of Deliciousness. It was. It was Redro. It was. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. yeah. There so, you go. Wow. So we were there the same night. Now the first and, band. And the first, I didn't say the first band was shit. <laughs> oh, oh, I, I, I didn't hear that at all. No, 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 no. no, no. I'm, I'm just having a flashback to that as well because I remember the night because, yeah, uh, like, like you said, wasn't in the band, but uh, I, the bands that I was playing in, yeah, uh, played with Colossus a, a few times, and yeah. you know, I, I would sort of heckle them being a bass player and then being a band without a bass player. Yep. I actually think um, I think I may have heard you scream out, get a fucking bass player or something along those lines. Yeah, I know someone yeah. shouted it. Yeah, um, that's right. Get a, get a bass player. That bass yeah. player needs to be me. So that's really cool. So, well, let's let's go yeah. to that. Um, um, I mean, at some point they went, we need a bass player or did, yeah. you, just, did you just chip away at them and go, I, hey, I, guys. I, I bullied them um, relentlessly. Um both uh, in person and online. Um, yeah, as, as far as online bullies go, I would probably be the pinup boy for, well, I mean, there was, there was no, 
sort of uh, physical threatening, but there was, you know, as I said, your band will amount to nothing unless you get a bass player and that bass player needs to be me. Um, and then, then, then I got a, a, a message one day saying um, uh, from, from Jono, uh, actually, no, it was a group message from Jono and Nath um, saying, so we've, we've been thinking uh, we've got to get a bass player. Do you want to, do you want to join uh, this dumb, dumb band? And I went, I, I acted super coy. I went, I'll oh, think about it and left the message really? for, a, for about five minutes. <laughs> then come back and gone, <laughs> but, but might have, might've been like three minutes and I've gone, all right. So I thought about it and yes, yes. Okay. And uh, you know, um, yeah, to, to quote you, man, like fanboying totally like, ah! yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that was a, that was a happy day. Um, Brilliant stuff. Yeah. So, so, the, and, and they had, um, you know, they, they had, uh, I think they'd done two, they did, they either did one or two seven inches and then they did um, the, the EP called four. Yeah. Um, uh, they, uh, they recorded all of that at, um, Nick Pallet's studio, uh, homebrew, homebrewed studios. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, as I said by the great Nick Pallet. Um, yeah, yeah, so, that, <laughs> that was that was uh, that was good times. Then we then we started rehearsing. So, it, I mean, you're coming into a band, that, well, a group, band group. You made it a band, I guess. Um, oh no, 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 no! They were already a band. Yeah, I, yeah. I just. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking about you know the terms. It's a couple, a few, you know, but but um. So did you just sort of take on a lot of the stuff that Jono was playing, or did you sort of go? Yeah, ultimately. Gonna... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like just that, and I'd throw fills in where I thought fills would go. Yeah. Like just um, you know, do the little walking numbers. Yeah. And yeah. and and just play chords. Um, okay. At the time. At the time i only had uh i only had the one bass but I, I was in two other bands at the time um so i didn't have it set up they were they were, they were tuned to drop b and we still are tuned to drop b um so my bass was never <laughs> set up for it so all i would do is just tune it down and it was just this super jelly like strings like um, yeah, yeah. Well, it, it wasn't ideal um but then yeah you know, got, got it sorted, got it set up properly. Um, so when I when I did play chords, uh, it was a lot more obvious, and yeah, not just uh, Jono taking taking the weight for both of us. <laughs> and it all, all I, I like to think it also gave Jono a chance to sort of like he could he could sort of chill out on playing as well and just sing, Absolutely. just let things let let things ring out. Yeah, because 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 he was using a. Um, a guitar amp and a bass amp and mm. then just uh using a splitter um yeah genius stuff yeah really clever um but and and i and i i always say that um i was amazed by the sound that these two guys could produce oh it was, yeah it was just brilliant and Oct octave it, pedals it, yeah it was a wall of sound it was fantastic mm. but i i also noticed that once you started playing with them a couple of things changed um for the good and that it really did you. no 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 um in the sense of the the um it, it did give Jono that time a little bit of comfort room to to sing and to to just go crazy with his guitar as well um yeah. but it also um you you bring you personally you bring uh, an energy to the stage <laughs> that um wasn't there before I mean, the drummer can drum and he can move around a bit and that he's sort of limited in his cage of drums. The guitarist slash singer who is covering off bass and guitar mm. isn't, isn't like, he's got so much shit going on to have you come in, take a bit of that off him and then bring the energy that you've got as well. Um, went, you know, brought, I think brought the band from, here to up here you know with the, the the stage presence um so yeah take that as you want that's that's just my opinion thanks man um but holy shit man you make it hard for other bass players because i can't fucking move around like you do <laughs> <I can't. laughs> well, it's it's all it's all about sacrificing um uh it's either play good or dance good you can't uh, do the two at once 
Uh, what if you, what, sorry, what if you sorry, you can, you can, <laughs> I can't. It's, it's one or the other. So what if th- I'm not, thanks, man. What if I'm not good at either? <laughs> mm. uh, maybe I'll no, play. No, 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 no you've, you've got to be good at one or the other, man. <laughs> or, or play without pants. At on. least, yeah, 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 that's right. Well, you look good, man. Like I said, we've got the same hairdresser and the same barber. So uh, at least you're looking fine. Yeah, well, that's that's one thing. <laughs> so um, let's quickly go through your gear. So, um, what what base are you using when you play with Doctor Colossus? Um, okay, so uh, uh, with Colossus, it's a EGC base, uh, Electric Guitar Company. Um, that's a solid aluminium neck uh, that goes through the body, hollow aluminium body. Um, those guitars and basses are just weapons. Yeah. Um, yeah, ab- absolute crazy. Um, I that plugs into a, a vintage rat uh, rat pedal, so a distortion, not a fuzz. Yep. Um, and that's plugged into uh, Tim's big bottom pedal, um, which I think anyone any any bass player that uses like a distortion or a fuzz effect um, and a valve amp should have one of them. I mean, I mean, it's it, it's old technology. A lot of pedals, like the Sands amp and the the bass butlers, have these sorts of um, uh, this sort of technology. But it's basically volume for uh, effects, volume for amp. Yeah. So that way, when you kick your distortion in, you don't lose all that bottom end. Yeah. Um, and that uh, and that's all plugged in and driven by a, a an orange AD two hundred. Awesome. Awesome. Um, and a quad, uh, orange quaddy and a, a orange one by fifteen. So, do you, so we're talking we're talking about our backs before and having to lift shit. Yeah, yeah. That that's a motherfucker. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say it's a good thing that you you know you're fit and healthy because um, <laughs> I, I sit behind my, a desk. My, most of my, my most of my back problems come from uh, moving amps. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. I, you know, I sit behind a right. desk, desk for my job, and I go to pick up a heavy amp, or a, a heavy ca- heavy cab, and it's like shit, man. I should have stretched. Yeah, yeah, that's but that's right. just lazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, that's it. A lot, a lot of um, a lot of um, lower back exercises and core exercises, um, and in no time you'll be able to um, drag your amp up the steps of the tote, or any other venue that decides to put steps. Yeah, and there's don't too many. Of Sorry, them. no, don't, don't don't get me wrong. I love the tote. the The worst one, the worst one. We we can say it because it's gone. Uh, is Ding Dong. Uh, um, I'm not sure if you ever did a load in at Ding Dong up no. that fire escape. Uh, yeah, that sucked. Wow. Great room, but fucking hell, man. Like, um, yeah, trying trying to carry a quad box. Uh, imagine trying to take an Ampeg fridge up there. Yeah, an eight by ten. Ooh, fuck at that. No, I went to gigs there, but I never actually played there. So, yeah. No, but I, um, sorry, we, we, we've sidetracked, and I figured we'd probably do that um, that's through all good. through conversation. Did you want to uh, know the other guys' gear as well? No, nah, man. No, nah, we, we're here to talk I about just, you today. Yeah. No, nah, it's all uh, good. Who wants to hear about that guy? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. what I what I do want to know is that obviously, um, you know, the band is driven from. Uh, the Simpsons theme, which in itself is just funny as fuck and brilliant. Yeah. But but what kind of what kind of influences? What kind of other bands have in, have influenced the music of Doctor Colossus? So what? I mean, there's you know there's I mean I've got a poster here of you know Dio riding the bus, um, all sorts yeah. of stuff. So um, yeah, what what sort of influences come about for you? Well. Um... We, we, we've got a little joke saying that um, we draw our influence from uh, the two Matts, Matt Groening and Matt Pike. Um, so we're a Matt rock band. Um, but obviously Matt Pike uh, being uh, in sleep at, and high on fire, um, we can say that we draw influences from both of those. Um, uh, like personally, you know, I've, I've sort of been listening to, you know, that sort of stuff like Sleep and and Clutch and, um, you know, Caius and uh, Fu Manchu. Been listening to those bands for years. I Hate God, um, all that sludgy sort of stuff. Um, with the introduction of the the um, the, the later members, um, Josh and Joel, um, 
they bring um, other things to the table, other influences to the table. Yep. Um, but uh, like from like the, the more metal side of things and more groovy side of things. Um, but for me, um, yeah, that, that being the age that I am, like that sort of classic uh, late 90s, early 2000s stoner rock. Yep. Um, um, yeah, that's kind of where it's at for me. It's kind of like that's that's a sort of you know took a hold of my uh, sixteen year old soul at the time and never let never let go. <laughs> it's not about to either, I don't think. So it's, yeah, uh, it's it, it's kind of in there, man. Yeah, I mean, you touched on you know the the other two guys coming in and and obviously um, that was um, a result, a consequence of unfortunately lo losing Nathan, which yeah which um yeah. was a horrible thing i'm sure um yeah for everybody um how do you think the how do you think they're being involved in the group now how is it how's it yeah you know, i guess changed up the dynamic i i think it's ex like all, all you have to do is listen to the dank and then listen to i'm a stupid moron with an ugly face and a big butt my butt smells and i like to kiss my own butt you can see like huge difference um yeah. in the music um uh I, I mean and then you can listen to the stuff that uh john owen nath did as a two-piece before i joined and that's sort of very different to the dank as well yeah, yeah. um yeah nath nath had his style and his groove and it was uh it was beautiful and uh yeah we like we'll we'll miss him forever yeah. um the fact that we got Josh Eels in playing drums, who happened to be one of Nate's best mates, it was yeah. very fitting to to get him. Um, and and then Joel, um, who's Jono's brother, uh, comes along and he's he, he's a absolute weapon on guitar. He's yeah. even more of even more of a weapon in um, uh, production as well. He he did the recording. Uh, so yeah. he did all the all, all the mixing and all the mixing for the, yeah. for the latest record um yeah it's um it's, it yeah, seems it's, to have all come around hasn't it you know yeah. everything seems to fit you know it's um it's all it's all quite fitting um yeah very much very like much the, so the um you know uh with ocean lord we're we're looking at putting together our first album and um uh, we were just amazed when we i'm not going to try and say the name of the latest album because i just can't seem to do it but i'll give it a go no i don't know i can't i can't even all i know is i like to smell my butt is the only thing i can remember um <laughs> but, <Close enough. laughs> which is a weird thing when i say that to my wife you know hey um but but listening to the recording and and i've only just started to learn now about starting to listen to certain things because i'm you know because now someone's saying to me we're going to record you know who are we going to record with you got to listen for these sounds and all this kind of stuff holy shit like that was a great mix that's a great oh mix. yeah really good and that's a home studio well to a certain extent yes like it was all mixed at a home studio yeah. everything else was either done at everyone's house um independently at their at their homes yeah or at a um little rehearsal studio um yeah. fountainhead in geelong um because it was COVID times yeah. we just basically had had to do this at home and then just send files and um let uh let joel uh make of it what he will and man he made it i reckon absolutely, he absolutely made it he worked the hell out of that yeah it's it's brilliant stuff absolutely brilliant um yeah so uh, you know a lot of people are amazed with the the title of the latest album and, <laughs> yeah and stoked that it hit the aria chart um yeah just for the fact that <laughs> I, I saw the chart and i'm reading it and i'm just going oh my god like can you imagine someone the, the stiff shirt people out there that we're going to have to read this. This is going to be so yeah. good. So where did the, I mean, I, I'm going to know the answer to this, but where did the title come from? Who, like, what the hell? 
Uh, right. Okay. I, I could have. I could have easily just said, "Well, it's a Simpsons quote," yeah, and left it at that. But yes, yeah. Um, so there's a scene. Uh, it, it's one of the prank calls that uh, Mo Sislak, the the owner of Mo's Bar, um, copped. And one day he he was basically uh, given this name to read out, and he goes, oh, "Look, let let me just check." Hey, everybody. I'm a stupid moron with an ugly face and a big butt and my butt smells and I like to kiss my own butt. Um, and then everyone laughs. And Jono brought that to the table, said, we should call it that. We had a couple of other ideas for album titles and Jono said, we'll do, want to call it that. So, it so that's like, it's like challenge accepted. Yeah. That's, that's fucking crazy. Like no one's going to release an album like that, let alone read that album title out loud on uh radio or community radio or yeah. anything like that uh, let alone um like we, we had no idea there was ever going to be a chance of chart charting in the arias let alone potentially getting a nomination for a, an aria award for the um uh heavy album of the year yeah so you know and and now sorry have to I, sh- read I shouldn't it out. say that i shouldn't say that it's not it's not nominated yet we find that out in a couple of days i think it's in consideration for nomination in consideration Again. and it'll be an yeah. absolute crime if it's not nominated um i, I think it, I, I just want someone to read it out loud preferably like guy sebastian or oh, delta goodrum or someone like that can't you actually wasn't it wasn't it? Didn't it come in just above Delta's? D- 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 <laughs> was it? Was it hers? Yeah, it came yeah. In. Delta was D- Delta was on that screenshot. Like, yeah, but like you guys five. are above. You guys are above. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, but she's been, she had been there for weeks, uh, ah. possibly months. That doesn't um, matter. That doesn't but, matter. But 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 um, as uh, as we use social media, we said no, no, she was above us because we said we got smashed by Delta once again. Oh. oh there's there's a covert joke yeah, for you no. touchy touchy oh. so all right let's um let's head into into some of my <laughs> usual sort of questions what i want to know okay. is um just think about the, the the feel the band the beers the the venue what's been your favorite gig to play with dr colossus so far okay um uh like one of one of the all-time favorites has got to be corner hotel because that was sort of a a dream come true after going to the corner for you know over 20 years and then being able to play that stage that was when we um opened for and and did a australian new zealand tour with uh fellow simpsons metal band uh oakley doakley um that 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 was um that was yeah like i said like a bucket list kind of kind of thing to um celebrate it was it was good because it was a nice and busy and packed room um best feeling best feeling i i think for for me personally would be the the very first show of the new lineup um that was a tribute to nath passing uh at at the old cherry yeah, 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 that's right, at the Old Cherry. Um, so so Nath passed away in, in, in t- uh, November 2017. Um, and in 2018, we decided to do a, like a one-off show, like a, a, a celebration, a, a celebration of Nath's life, a tribute to him and that sort of thing. And it was the most loved up energy in that room like I've, I've ever felt uh, at, at a show. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, there was there was just sort of like high fives, hugs and chanting of Nathan, hoisting drinks to Nathan. Um, it, yeah, it was really beautiful. I, um, yeah, I've, 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 I can't really describe it in any other way apart from it so- sounding like super, you know, hippie like. Yeah. Just like it, everyone was so loved up, it was it, um, it, it was, was wonderful. wonderful. It was really, really, really cool. From from a punter's perspective, that was. Oh, were that you there? Was, oh fuck yeah, yeah. Oh far out there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was. I was in the back there somewhere. Oh wow. Um, and that was 
that was an amazing um, tribute. Um, and, and, and again, that was the first time, you know, the, 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 the full lineup was there. And I think John, I apologized a couple of times because, you know, it was like, oh, we're just sort of getting used to this kind of thing. And it was no one gave a shit. It was just phenomenal. You know, I mean, no one picked up any, you know, it's not like anyone made any huge mistakes or anything, but it was just, um, that was a good feeling. It was a good, it was a good night. Um, yeah, hard one to beat, especially as a fan of the band and um, as a pumper. That was, and, you know, now the Cherry Bar's moved as well. So it's kind of like, I mean, that was the last time I went to the Cherry. You know, the oh, old, wow. Yeah, that was wow. The, okay, that, that was the last time I went to the Cherry. I sort of just went, yeah, that's it. You know, I knew they were, I knew they were looking to move, so I was like, no, that'll that'll be my that'll be my last one there. You know, let's leave it as that. So that was good. Um, Far out. And some some bastard bought me a couple of um, espresso martinis, which ruined me at the end of the night. No, oh, um, yeah, that'll do that. So yeah, it was one of those nights. But no, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Yeah, yeah, that was. Um, I, I, I still sort of think of it from time to time. Yeah. Just sort of pop pops up. Oh, that that's that's awesome. You were there, so you you can probably um, uh, attest to the uh, the feeling that was in the room. Oh, it was fantastic. It was fantastic. It was um, oh, rad, man. It was, um, and and you know the other bands that were with you guys just just uh, everyone was a friend. Everyone. Everyone knew Nath. Everyone was, yeah, it was just a, it was, yeah, like you said, a, a little bit of a loving, I think. A little, you know, it was, yeah. it was just such a great night. Um, yeah. And it was, um, you know, beautiful, beautiful words spoken and, and a good feel. So it was nice. What I do want to ask you, though, was how crazy was it when you guys supported Oakley Doakley? Like, um it, you know, yeah it was rad it was a rad rad tour sorry cut you off but... no 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 it's it's like I, I i think to myself like here are these guys and you know they they this is their thing this is their their very select pointy genre and over the pond comes this you know this other band who have a very um not the same as you guys that it's it's different but one part of it is extremely focused, you know, like, did you just, just get in a room and just sink piss and just talk about the Simpsons or did you not talk about the Simpsons? No, 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 not at all. Um, look, they were awesome dudes. Yeah. They were awesome dudes. And um, it was such a fly by night thing. It was, I think it was uh, seven shows in eight days. Yeah, so wow. it was, it, uh, yeah, it was f five in, Five in um, five in Australia. Then we had Sunday off, and then we flew to New Zealand yeah. and did Auckland and the other place in Auckland. Wellington? No, the other place was it Wellington, Sorry. Christchurch, Christchurch, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um, I should remember that because that was a hell of a night. Um, but yeah, it it, it was. Um, without like i don't mean this to sound cocky at all um but like who else were they going to get to support them in australia like exactly like, it's it's like it's the to, to quote um troy mcclure it's the role i was born to play baby you know like, we, we had to do it um and i think if they got someone else like some other um awesome local band um I think there there may have been like a public outrage. Uh, why didn't you get Doctor Colossus? I, I, th I think it would have started a mass rivalry. Yeah, um, yeah. You, but, you, you certainly would have you would have had problems. <clears throat> now, now, John Jono actually went out for dinner with Head Ned, the singer. Um, while he was uh, in the states, yeah. While he was in the states, so they they had already you know sort of um, you know they had already planted this seed. Um, and yeah, it came to fruition. Uh, it's fantastic. So when it when it when it came about, it was just like, well, yeah, of course, let's <laughs> let's do it. Um, but no, there, there wasn't there wasn't this there, there wasn't this massive like uh, you know uh, uh, sit down around the couch and 
try and out Simpsons each other. Um, I'd, I'd there, there, there was none of that. It, it, it was, it was, yeah, it wasn't like that at all, really. That's- which, just, which in hindsight is kind of disappointing, right? I'm going to stick with my fantasy of you guys sitting on couches opposite, you know, a table, you know, them on one side, you guys on the other, and just, <laughs> you know, out, you know, trying to out, out, out quote each other or something. I just, I, yeah. I just had this vision. Um, right. That would have been cool. I, I do that. I do that in my head constantly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's let's jump off um, talking about you guys. Let's let's talk about some of the stuff, uh, some of the other stuff. The rock gods come down and they give you, Mike, the power to create the gig, the yeah. gig. I want you to pick the three bands: living, dead, broken up, existing, not existing, whatever. Give me the three bands that you'd want to see in that lineup. I I, I read this question uh over and over again and i changed my mind like sort of every 45 minutes yeah. it's kind of one of those questions that you can't answer um probably however however the one band uh that that came up every time was motorhead but the originals like so lemmy uh fast eddie uh and filthy yep. um if if i could see that i would it kind of doesn't matter who else is playing. Okay. If I could cool. see if I could see that that lineup of Motorhead, I would uh, be most happy. Okay. Um, so in this look, in this or, particular original, minute, in this particular minute, give me the other two. Look, I'd say original lineup of Caius. Yep. Because it was such an influence on me, um, and probably late 90s early 2000s lineup of Brant Bjork and the Bros even though I've seen them that lineup uh quite a few times uh some of the best nights I've had in my life is watching Brant Bjork and the Bros live nice. oh I'm gonna throw in a fourth original lineup of Dr Colossus uh John Owen Nath okay if I could see if I could see those boys again yeah that would be a fucking rad night. All right, I'll as the venue owner, I'll uh, I'll let you have the fourth band. <laughs> You'll pass that. They can they can open it, right? Let, <laughs> just let them just, just let them play in the car. They can play in the car park. They can sell their t-shirts. Yeah, you know. I think I think um, that 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 for me that as long as they play mono, I'm cool. You know, <laughs> that's, that's that's fine. Um, so out of those, out of your your four. Who's who's headlining? Oh, Motorhead. Yeah. Motorhead, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, mind you, I'd I'd like him to open so that way you know um, I'm completely sober and soak everything in, as opposed to having to wait for them to play at the end of the night and I, I and wonder, being uh, a little too liquored up. I wonder if anyone's ever done that: open to show and then close to show. Shit, that'd be um more, more, more power to them. For, that'd be for interesting, wouldn't it? Staying ability. Now I've seen people such as yourself who play in a couple of bands, open a show in one band and finish a yeah. show in another band. Yeah, I've seen a, that happen. That's not a great idea. I think I, I think it's unfair on either the band that you play afterwards <laughs> or the band that you play before. Because it's either you're not going to give them your all in the first band or, or you've or you've given them all, or what are you drinking there? Oh, we're doing. Oh, okay. To oh, the, yeah. To, to the people of uh, yeah, I'm drinking um uh, wank. I'm drinking Grindhouse's wank. Wow, I've not seen that before. Do you know Grindhouse? No. Ah, uh, well. Oh shit! You a- mean the band Grindhouse? Yeah. Oh crap! I was thinking. Oh fuck. Yeah, they, they make would... a beer called Wank. I did not know that. There you go. See, I was thinking Brewer Grindhouse. I'm thinking, who's a brewer named Grindhouse? No, wow. no, no, no. It's so a band. You, you can, you can, it, you, you can, can have go a out wank. the street yeah. while you mow the lawn. You can have a wank. Wow, I'm going to look that up. Why, why, why you um have an interview? You can have a wank. 
It, it, it just works on there's, so many levels. There's only one other name. If you'd said to me, what would Grindhouse call a beer? There was only one other word <laughs> that came to mind. And let's just say wank is more marketable. Yeah. That's... Um, <laughs> oh, they're the greatest, wow. man. Lo- love them a bit. Great guys. Mad as cut yeah. snakes, but brilliant. oh yeah, absolutely brilliant. Wouldn't have it any other way. Excellent. <laughs> All right. So... Um, a little bit of serious talk. What's okay. um all this COVID shit and lockdowns and all the rest of it? I've been asking everyone what sort of what what, what do you think the future of gigging looks like? You know, and we've we've had a few few interesting ideas. What what sort of ideas have you had about what it's going to look I, like? Um, what what it's probably going to be, or what I wish it would be. Well, give me give me what you probably it's probably going to be first, and then tell me what you wish. I, I, I think it's going to be one of those, uh, uh, it'll be drips and drabs. And look, I'm fine with drips and drabs because all I care about is wanting to see live bands again. Yeah. Um, and I don't care if that's 20, 50, 150, 200 people in a room. Yeah. Um, I, I just, I, I, I used to hate my ears ringing for days after a show and now all i really want is to wake up or or find it so hard to go to sleep because of the in my ears i i, I kind of long for it um yeah. so I, I i i think it's going to be one of those I, I in victoria it'll probably be if you're not vaccinated you can't come in mm-hmm. I, I think that'll probably be the deal, but I think it'll be drips and drabs. Um, and look, I'm, I'm <laughs> I, I, how, however it opens, I'm, I just, I just want live shows back again. Yeah. I came out of the supermarket and there's a local busker at our, at our supermarket playing acoustic guitar. Yeah. And I always throw him a little bit of coin and uh I was actually sort of parked like kind of right in, right in front of him yep. or you know, a few meters away. I sat there for about 10 minutes, man, like just with the window down, just watching him play acoustic guitar because it was the closest thing I had That's to a fucking wow. live show in Asia. I just sat there. He played, he played Blackbird by the Beatles um, yep. and, and like, on acoustic. And then he had a loop station. So he had the, um, the, the 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 riff down and then he played the vocal melody over the top like a solo um yeah it was good i honked the horn clapped clapped out the window but i mean the 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 dude's an absolute talent but at the same time that was proving how starved i kind of am for entertainment sitting in a supermarket car park watching a busker and sort of getting off on that as long um, as you weren't having I, a wank at the same time, that I think it's fine. They were sitting um, in the fridge and I was thinking about them. But but it's it's so interesting because it's it's both awesome and terribly sad at the same mm. time. That, oh, ab- um, absolutely. That that's the case. I mean, awesome that you know, we can start to appreciate things a little bit differently. Um, yeah. But also, you know, at least you could say you went to a gig. Well, that's right. I, I, I saw. I, I watched a live musician. Yeah, exactly. That's what I did, man. Exactly. Instead of standing yeah. in front of the mirror, yeah, it's. Um... <laughs> yeah, I, I think I, I think it's going to come in slowly, and then I th- the optimist in me um, says, or, or thinks, or at least wishes, um, after after the you know sort of drips and drabs, the floodgates will open. Then it's yeah. going to be. Back to uh, I I think once venues are up to sort of three quarter to full capacity, uh, I I think there's going to be a or I hope there's going to be a bit of a like a live music renaissance. Um, People are going to be thirsty. People are going to be hungry, and they're going to like Melbourne being Melbourne. um, Hopefully, all the venues will cater for it, and um, will quench our thirst of live entertainment live music um yeah i absolutely agree and and i'm i'm hoping it's going to be um venue 
festival after venue festival after venue festival. Um, I personally, I am, I am <clears throat> longing for River Rocks. Um, I'm not sure if you know what River Rocks is. Yeah, I know um, it. Yeah. It's uh, the the greatest. Uh, I, I'm from Geelong. Um, it's the greatest day on the Geelong rock and roll calendar, possibly the uh, Victorian rock and roll calendar. I've um, never been, but oh, dude, when it when it happens, you'll go to one and you'll never want to miss another one. Okay. Even though even though it goes for two days. It's kind of more of a four day bender. It's um, yeah, it's rad. Nice. They just ju just announced that they won't be doing it this November again. Yeah, obviously, uh, because of the way the world is. But um, it'll be back. It'll be back. Um, and uh, my tip for that will be, you know watch for tickets because they'll go like that yeah i mean they all they always do anyway like uh pandemic aside um but it'll be a doozy and, and and it showcases some of the greatest uh rock and roll and heavy bands in australia um and sometimes overseas acts as well yeah yeah fantastic um yeah. i've never gone I, I live in the uh eastern side of melbourne so um i'm just one of those people that just tends to never cross the city you know i'll go to the city but i very rarely go out the other side unless go over the bridge a, man and the whole new a, world out there well yeah exactly and you know there's a, um before this shit at the fan um we were lined up to play a few different places that um you know were, were over the other side of the bridge and was like I was looking forward to getting over there and just seeing what it's like and stuff like that. I mean, I'm talking like it's another country. It's just you know, it's 30 minutes away. Um, yeah. But yeah, just never, never really have. Um, but I have heard of River Rocks, so I think I'll I'll take your advice and book it up for next year. Um, That's a doozy, man. Woo. Well, it sounds like fun too, especially if you're talking four days. And I got heaps of annual oh. leave racked up. So. Yeah. yeah, don't <laughs> you know where to go. Yeah, you know where to go. Right. Um, That's right. All right. So, what's um, what's going on at the moment then with um, Doctor Colossus? What what sort of things are you planning? What's coming up? Are you selling merch? What are you what are you sort of doing in this We've, moment of you know grey area? That, look, there's always merch, um, and that's kind of uh, kept the band uh, ticking over um, during the, the the pandemic. There's always a t-shirt. There's always something. Um, uh, I, I sort of joke, but kind of lean into the seriousness of it. We are a tra traveling t-shirt selling band, t-shirts first, um, uh, because we get uh, uh, Glenno Smith to do the vast majority of the designs, and Glenno's uh, an absolute wizard. Um, he he's the guy who did the uh, stupid moron album cover, um, yeah. uh, as well as the vast majority of. Um, the other artwork. Um, How long until so, he gets sued, do you reckon? Oh, he won't get sued. Because <laughs> he's very good at it. I mean, they'll either sue him or they'll offer him a job. Um, um, no, no, no. I, I, I think that's all going to come back to the band before it comes back to uh, to Glenno. Because he's very good but, at it. Yeah. Oh, he, he's an absolute wizard. Like, the, the, the stupid moron thing was... Mm. I mean, that was Jono saying... Uh, you know, dope smoker kind of vibe. But the he's Simpsons, like, yeah. Well, I mean, he doesn't need to know that because he yeah. does that with every single thing. <laughs> right, say no more, dude. Yeah. And that's pretty much what, like, first draft was pretty much what he sent to us. And we've gone, holy shit. All right. Fuck it. Green light up, boys. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely <laughs> love it. Um, um, yes, but, I do have. But, I do have my shares of t-shirts. That a boy. <laughs> um, um, now we we just threw up a thing on Bandcamp. Um, it was a cover, uh, a Turbo Negro cover. Yep. Um, I won't say too much, but that's an insight into a little thing that we're playing with at the moment. Hopefully, we uh, there might be a little online thing. Um, 
before Christmas. Nice. Um, awesome. And, and, and again, hopefully give money to sort of uh, live music Victoria, that sort of thing. Okay. Um, I, I think the the main thing is like, uh, or the main want is sort of sitting here, fingers crossed, uh, waiting for the doors to open again because we haven't launched the album yet, dude. No, I know. It's um... and, and, and there was a there was a time when we thought every time Victoria went into lockdown was when Dr. Colossus had shows lined up and we yeah. thought it was actually us. It was like, we, we thought, we thought it was the band causing these lockdowns. It was like, well, should we like just postpone playing live ever again? Or should the band just disband for the greater, the, the greater good of Victoria just to get us out of lockdown so we haven't booked in any shows. We've cancelled everything, and and things are starting to look a little bit better. I, so this I, might be the last conversation we ever have about Doctor Colossus, man, because it just seems right. <laughs> it seems it seems like uh, if we don't organise anything, the state gets better. Well, uh, <laughs> I don't think it's anything magically linked. How's that, Jack? <laughs> What I, what I do think is, I don't know, maybe Dan's kids are fans of yours and he's a little bit worried about letting them come to a gig or something. Uh, let's not get political, but, you know. I, I would, uh, okay. Well, Dan should reach out to us. Uh, we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll put, put the kids' names to the door. They can be on the guest list. Um, and that'd be brilliant. <laughs> I'd like to see him in yeah, the audience. Yeah, but, that'd be great. That's but, um, right. <laughs> well i don't think that um dr colossus is the cause i really don't um oh thank god but i, but I do and and i would know um because i've done my research <laughs> you've done your research yeah yeah I, a boy I, I googled something and yeah that's what i got um <laughs> apparently there's a virus of some sort i don't know um but no it's all good um so yeah we're all looking forward to that i think so don't plan anything yet mm. but when everything unlocks Give us the plans, and I'm looking forward to seeing what comes up with this uh, this cover that you're talking about because I have listened, um, and I'm interested to see what you might be hinting at. But don't give me anything more because I like a surprise. But yeah, I, well, I, I didn't discuss this with the powers that be, so I'm not sure how much no. I can give away. But at the same time, like uh, you'll figure it out. Yeah, don't um, don't um don't get yourself into trouble. And, and and at the same time, I think we're already starting to write riffs and work on songs for um, the next recording because, you know, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure as soon as we start getting a couple of songs under our belt, the floodgates will open, then we'll finally be, got, be able to get to play live again. Yeah, it'd um, be great. It'd be good. I mean, I like to hear new stuff, but um, man, just as long as you keep playing some of the oldies, uh, just as long as you well, keep, keep them in the mix. Um, well, it's always a good thing. We've got to uh, we we've got to put some um, we've got to put some stripes on the latest record. Yeah, you know, uh, as in playing those tracks live. Yeah, but like the vast majority of that record we haven't played live yet. Yeah, maybe 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 three of the songs we've played live. Yep. Um, in the in the last couple of shows. Um, but yeah, we we have the vast majority of the record we haven't played live yet so yeah I, i'm really looking forward to it because we were you know um uh, when we we're allowed to rehearse we were um uh, and rehearsing as a four piece it was um it was sounding really good uh it was pretty exciting it was big um, yeah. there was lots of lots of smiles in the room you know like what yeah. we're just sort of going oh yeah this this will go down well lockdown fuck yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, totally. Totally understand. It. I think but, everyone. But everyone who happened, dude. Everyone who's in a band, I think, was probably feeling the same way. But yeah, just such a bastard. So let's 100%, talk. Dude. Let's talk. Um, my Spotify list. So I'm slowly building up a Spotify playlist, and you've mentioned the new album. So what song of Doctor Colossus is, 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 are we going to put into the playlist? Uh, that's a really good question. 
Doesn't have to be off the new album. It, it could be anything else. Uh, it's either we go the most played one or like my, my heart says Space Coyote because it's yeah. my baby. Is it? Uh, and, uh, yeah, that was that was uh, rolling around in, in my head for quite a while and the boys brought it to life. Wow. Um, I do like yeah. that. I do like it. Nice. It's got uh, a good thanks. feel. Got a good groove to it. Thanks, man. It's yeah. a, it's a, it's all about the journey. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, and and plus, it's one of the best Simpsons episodes as well. You know, where Homer eats the uh, Guatemala chili from the insane mm-hmm. asylum. Yeah. You know. um, okay, let's just do that. You want to do that? Yeah. Space Coyote. Yeah. All right. It's 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 either Space Coyote or sixty six and six. Which is, uh, I'll, I'll leave it up to you, dude. You figure it out. Ooh. You weigh it up. Yep. Ooh, I don't know I, if I can do that. Yeah, you I, can. I can't make the call. You got to make the call. You You're make the call. Boy. You're a big boy. <laughs> yeah, I've been told. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh. So, um, so all right. Let's let's do that. Let's do Space Coyote. Let's give it some. Let's give it some play. Um, right on. So we'll add that in. The other thing is, um, I'm going to get some links and stuff down there in the okay. the youtube world um to Bandcamp, your spotify stuff all that sort of stuff video all that gear um right on so everyone who's watching or anyone who's watching um make sure you go down and check out that stuff go and have a listen go and buy some merch get into the craziness that is dr colossus mike thank you very much for your time now that we actually Absolute got pleasure. now that we actually got online after, we, after. we got there in the end brother that's all that matters it is it's all good um thanks very much for your time mate we'll catch you again right on man so, yeah. be safe be well <laughs>